Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're making a Zelda themed cake featuring Link in stained glass and a figure. I'm starting with a tall 6 inch cake. The straw is there just to help keep the layers of cake in place as this was made during UK's mental heatwave and it needed ganaching twice. Yep, it happens to us all. Dampen the cake ready for sugar paste and dry off any overspray from the board. We're going to panel this cake and one way to measure it is with string. You can hold the string up and see how tall your sugar paste needs to be. I have a cutting mat with a grid on so I just use how many squares the string equates to and roll it to that. Once you've rolled your piece to the right height and width, roll it around your rolling pin and hold it upright against the cake. Start to unroll it, sticking it to the cake as you go. Trim the overlap and smooth the join together. It doesn't have to be invisible as we're going to texture it. Use your flexi smoothers just to adhere the paste to the cake and trim off the top. Now cover the top and use your scalpel to trim the overhang. Rub the join with a smoother just to get it to stick together. Find an image you like. This one is Link with a bow and arrow. I just traced it onto greaseproof paper. Hold the image against your cake and roughly mark where the picture ends. This will be the area we don't texture. I'm using a Katie Sue stone mould. I'll leave a link in the description box for it. You can use any stone mould you have, such as brickwork or cobbles, and mark it in manually with a Dresden tool. Hold the mat against the cake and press in gently. You'll want to refrain from pushing the edges too hard or you might end up with a harsh line. For a more even transfer, use a flexi smoother, which will distribute the pressure more evenly. Once you've gone all around the back and left the front untouched, you can go back and press the mat randomly on shallow textured areas. Don't forget the top. Do exactly the same texture on a 4 inch cake. For a colour wash, grab yourself a small ball and some gel colours, such as brown. Put some of the gel in a bowl and also some yellow works well too. Now add water. You want it runny, not a paint consistency. Mix the gel with the water. You'll notice some lumps. This is fine, it actually allows your wash to vary in colour strength. Now start painting it on, pushing your brush into all the lines. You'll notice the colour seeping into the line work and cracks of the bricks. Airbrushing would stick to the bricks more than the line work as the bricks stand out closer. Using a wash allows the deeper colour to sit in the lines instead of on the brick. As you pick up colour on your brush, you will see stronger areas of colour from the gel lumps allowing for various shades. Using some kitchen roll, clean up any major drips and dab the paint to give it a mottled texture. Do the same to your 4 inch cake. Whilst that dries we can work on the image. On the back I've just traced the most important lines with the pencil. Don't add too much detail, just the outlines you need to make it more accurate for you. We can add other lines in by eye. You'll see I haven't added any stained glass lines in the sea or the clouds etc. Hold your image into place with acupuncture needles and trim off any paper that overhangs as it may stick to your wet brickwork. Using a sharp pencil or a Dresden tool, mark over the important outlines of your image. Remember, the outline is a very small trace of non-toxic pencil, not lead. I'm sure you've eaten a lot worse with a few bugs in your veg. Now grab yourself various paint brushes, some thick and some thin, gel pots in the colours you'll need and some water. Mix your water with your gel on a plate and start marking in the large areas. I just colour block everything first so I know I've got the right colour where it needs to be. Then you can go back and deepen the colour or shade it afterwards. I don't want to zone out and start painting a piece of his hair blue.
Once it's all colour blocked, you can deepen the colour by using a gel a little more concentrated and add areas of shading. Now this is where the magic happens. Grab a thin brush and some black paint and carefully outline your image. It comes to life right before your eyes. Use your image as a guide to add in those extra lines for the stained glass effect across the legs, body and arms. The board is covered using the toilet seat method which I'll link above. It's just textured beforehand after rolling it out. You can cover the join by pressing over it with the impression mat. To frame the window, roll out some white paste with Tylo added into a sausage. You can texture it by rolling it with the mat. Stick these to the edges of the painting with water and trim to size. Add dowels or straws to the cake to support the 4 inch cake on top. Four around the circumference and one in the centre. I glue the tears together with ganache. Whilst that sets, give your board a colour wash. To add a bit of detail to your window, you can use an ornate moulding. This one is a marvellous moulds design, I'll link it below, however any fancy pattern will do. Stick this across the top with water and colour it too. For the Triforce symbol, roll out some white paste with Tylo powder added. The Tylo helps them keep their shape better. It's one of those pink cutters again, this time in triangles. You've seen me use these lots in past videos. Give your cutter a wiggle and cut out three triangles the same size. Align them together like so to create the Triforce symbol. Stick this to the front of the top tier. Mix your favourite gold luster with a few drops of lemon extract to create a paint. Remember to notify your customers if it's a non-toxic one. Cut the age out using tappets or click sticks and add them to the centre. For Lynx boots, take some brown sugar paste and roll it into a sausage. Bend the sausage and form a flat pointed area for the front of the boot. Then roll the other end of the sausage to create a thinner ankle. Slice the top of the boot flat. His legs are little sausages of white paste with Tylo added. Add a white leg to the boot and strengthen them with a cocktail stick. Add one into the cake upright and one slightly slanted so the cocktail sticks are closer. For the body, roll out a teardrop shape of green paste and pinch the bottom flat. Slowly tease the shape longer and cut off the top flat. Push this down onto the cocktail sticks, it should feel pretty secure. Mark in a centre line where his belt will go so it helps you visualise where elements need to go on. Cut a V-shape of paste from the front at the top to create a hole. Using some lighter lime green paste, roll one end into a point and insert it into the V. The neck is flesh coloured paste with Tylo added to strengthen it and rolled into a sausage. Add in some creasing detail around the belt area and top of the boots. Add a thin strip of brown paste across the line you made and make the join at the front. A squashed yellow ball of paste creates the buckle. For his fist, take some flesh paste and score a line so you can bend the knuckles. Score in lines to create the look of fingers curled into a fist. Add this to the belt with the fingers facing out. I often have to mimic the paws myself so the thumbs or fingers are facing the right way. Yes, I look like a loon. 
For the open hand, start with an oval and cut out a small V to create a thumb. Then make three cuts to create four fingers. Separate the fingers and gently roll them to round them out and tap any pointed ends down. Create another arm from a sausage and pop it onto a cocktail stick. Insert this into the body and add the hand to the excess bit of stick. Adjust the finger placement to make a waving hand. Paint a swirl on the buckle with some brown paint. To add some overall colour and shading, airbrush with brown colouring around the tops and bases of the tiers and around the columns. Switch to black colouring for a deeper effect. Roll out long thin strips of green to make vines. Vary them around the tier tops hanging at different heights. The leaves are teardrop shapes flattened and scored down the centre. Add these to the vines with water. The name is also made with click sticks, I'll pop the tutorial above. Now, there are chickens in Zelda and they have a name which I'll pop on screen now. Some people pronounce it cuckoos, but it's not spelt that way, it only has one O, so others call them cuckoos. It seems the correct pronunciation is a mystery, so I'll just call them chickens so I don't sound even more of an idiot. They are made with basic shapes of white with tylo added. The beak is a little cone of yellow and the red comb on top is a strip of paste indented with a Dresden tool. And it's wattle, the dangly chin bit, is a teardrop of red paste. Don't forget its eyes too. You'll need three chickens, one for the board and two for the top. Finally is head. It's quite big so we're making it lightweight with a polystyrene ball. Choose a ball that's half the size you want the finished head to be. Push the ball into the ball of paste and pull the paste up around it, pinching the top closed. Roll it between your hands to get rid of the joins. Insert a cocktail stick to make it easier to handle. Press the sides of the head in and mark in the eye shapes with the Dresden tool. Remove the paste from the centre and fill the holes with white, pressing them into shape with the Dresden tool. Add large black pupils with balls of paste. Mark in a cute smile. Ignore the nose, I decided to change it later on. And don't forget those catch lights. Define the edge of the eyes with black paint and a fine paintbrush. Add some thick eyebrows in the same way. Now remove the cocktail stick from the neck and push the wand from the head down into the channel. Now his hat is quite large, so it's going to be heavy and prone to pulling the figure backwards. To minimise this, roll the top round part flat, leaving the spiked end still rounded. Wet the flat rounded part and the spike and attach the round area to the back of the head. Also attach the spike to the body to help hold it on. Here I'm adding that small flesh teardrop to replace the nose. His ears are done in the same way as the vine leaves. Cut the bottom at an angle and attach them to his head. Hair is made with yellow spikes and the larger front pieces are flat teardrops. And we're done! A perfect cake for any Zelda nerd. And don't forget, the game is called Zelda, the princess in the game. The hero in green is called Link, though I have no idea what you want to call those chickens. Hope you enjoyed it, see you next week, bye guys!